You know, uh, a lot of stuff has happened, and I need to tell you the story about my Patreon supporter, Shelly. And I asked Brent what he meant by the 12th Gale Commandment in that email that he sent me about my Patreon supporter, Shelly. Because there are only 11 commandments in both the original Gale Commandments and Gale Commandments 2.0. Brent said, and this was on January 25th, we had a Skype, the Twelfth Commandment is an addition to the Gale Commandments 2.0 that Jesus didn't give you because he felt you didn't need it in this timeline. There's a version of you in another timeline that did. Apparently that commandment still applies to some people that need the Gale Commandments. And I said, what is it? He said, well, the Twelfth Commandment was this. Thou shalt only defecate in the bathroom and only inside the toilet. Thou shalt not defecate in the sink, bathtub, on the floor, or in any other area of the house outside the bathroom, including outdoors on the apartment grounds. The apartment window does not constitute as a toilet. Should the bathroom toilet become clogged, one must use the bathroom facilities at the nearest fast food establishment until a plumber can be called to fix the toilet in the apartment. One must never continue to, defe to defecate in the toilet to the point that poop is overflowing over the outside of the toilet. Thou shalt not cook with, consume, or eat fecal matter under any conditions. Playing with poop is strictly forbidden. And I said, I needed this in another timeline? I would never do this unless I went insane. And then I thought, oh my God, I just thought of something. Since Shelley is a metaphor for Lori McBride, when and if Lori goes mad, she will thoroughly violate this 12th commandment. Lori does have a fetish for poop. At the rate Lori is going, it will probably happen within a month. Nebuchadnezzar ate grass and Lori will be eating poop. This next month will be very interesting. Lori had no idea what she was getting into when she made up her mind to bed Jesus, laugh out loud. She has met her match. Even Satan can't help her now. I bet we won't even recognize her a month from now. She's about to hit a real low. And then Brent said, this was at 8, 12 p.m. last night. I think the world needs to hear the Shelley story. It's something that imparts a lot of life lessons. Maybe that's why Jesus gave Rule 13 the inspiration to do brain reads on Shelley. And um, here is the email that, um, that Brent sent me. Shark Mouth Shelley shares syringes by the seashore. Dearest Gale, as you remember from the last Friday night hangout on Discord, your regular patrons, as well as Rule 13 and your brand new $25 patrons, Justin and Shelley, were discussing many personal matters. Shelley decided to reveal more information about her health problems. As she was talking about the mysterious health condition that caused her to go blind in both eyes, I saw Rule 13 make a strange face. It appeared something Shelley said wasn't sitting quite right with her. That was when Rule 13 decided to do a brain read on Shelley. The results of the brain read were shocking to say the least. It appears Shelley was not being entirely forthcoming about her history. Since I was quite concerned with helping this poor woman regain her sight, I was interested to know all the details of what happened. It turns out the situation is far more complex than I had imagined. The following account is the true story behind Shelley and her eyes. Shelley was on a shift, was on shift as a nurse at the Jesuit hospital, pushing the drug cart. A woman of roughly 325 pounds, she used the cart to support most of her weight, causing the tiny rubber wheels on the cart to squeal like a pained animal as it was shoved up and down the shadowy halls. The long-term care patients at the hospital knew Shelley well. Her presence was preceded, oh goodness, I'm trying to make sure that this video is working right because I'm still learning Linux Ubuntu. 
Her presence was preceded by the smell of musty, unwashed clothes and cigarettes. Here we go. <laughs> and the wet horse coughing that shook through the folds of her stomach and ex exhaled through jagged gray teeth. The first stop of the day was with a fentanyl overdose patient. The skinny young man was laying in the hospital bed, still recovering from his ordeal from the previous night. He groaned deliriously as his nurse entered the room. Hey, sugar, time for your meds, Shelly wheezed. The large, musty woman entered the code to unlock the drug cart, then pulled out a stick of Narcan. One for you, she said, injecting the patient with the Narcan who moaned with pain, and one for me. She then re removed a syringe full of morphine, pulled up a stomach fold, and injected herself with it. Yes, she hissed with relief, even better than a morning coffee. Shelley burped and set the used morphine needle aside to save for refills later. Before she left the room, she took a whiff of the air like a bloodhound, letting go of the drug cart. She, le she leaned over the patient and began sniffing on his body just like a dog, salivating and licking her lips. She followed her, her smushed bulldog nose down the patient's arm and picked up his hand. Yep, just as I thought, she moaned wetly. The man's fingers were still powdered with white fentanyl. Shelley parted her lips and stuck the man's index finger into her mouth. She deep-throated it before moving on to, to the other fingers, sucking them clean one by one. As the last pinky finger popped out of her mouth, bursting with a shoestring of saliva, she smiled and dropped his hand limply on the bed. Ah, just like a powdered donut, she grinned. After that, it was off to the next patient. This particular day was a great day for Shelley. The previous night, dozens of patients had shown up to the ER with fentanyl overdose after raiding the dumpsters of a local veterinary hospital. This meant each patient arrived with tons of delicious treats and surprises on their person. Patches unused pills, half full syringes, powder on their lips and fingers. For Shelly, it was like a day in candy land. Yet all this snacking was making her hungry, and all this walking was making her swollen feet hurt. Midway through her morning, Shelly sat down to have her lunch. She entered the code into the drug cart and removed a bottle of OxyContin, throwing it back like a soda. She opened a second bottle and poured a handful, then lifted her scrub top to store away some extra pills under her breast flaps and stomach folds. Huffing and wheezing, she opened up a fentanyl patch and used it to wipe the sweat from her brow. Yet today, after years of opioid abuse on the job, Shelley had finally bitten off more than she could chew. Her glassy eyes rolled into the back of her head. She burped, coughed wetly, and collapsed like a dead cow on the linoleum floor. The sound was like a massive explosion, sending shock waves through the halls before slowly fading back into silence. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, my. Thinking a tornado had hit the hospital, dozens of hospital staff rushed down the halls to investigate the damage and check on the patients. Shelley's co-worker, Nurse Jackie, was the first at Shelley's side. Before the doctors had even arrived, she immediately knew what had happened. She whipped out her phone to call SeaWorld. Yeah, SeaWorld, it's Shelley again. Shelley, the voice on the phone asked. Shark mouth Shelley. Shelley sh share syringes by the seashore? Yep, Shelley, she's done it again. Send a whale tarp. Got it, we're firing up the truck and on our way. Click. The doctor arrived soon after, pulling out his stethoscope to try in vain to find a heartbeat under all the fat. Oh, Shelley, he shook his head. There isn't enough Narcan in the world. 
SeaWorld arrived and Shelley was lifted by whale tarp, whale tarp into their transportation truck to the marine veterinary services at their facility. There, they had the appropriate medical equipment to treat her condition, as well as veterinarians on staff who had experience with treating fat women. Unfortunately, Shelley had fallen into a coma. It would take gallons of Narcan to save her. As she explained on Discord, her liver and kidneys had failed, and this was a result of acute opioid overdose. She had also gotten a double eye infection from routinely using dirty needles stolen from the hospital. While veterinarians were able to save Shelley, they unfortunately had to remove one of her eyes and the other was left severely blinded. The years of opioid use had also severely damaged her frontal lobe, that's up here, <laughs> worsening a pre-existing condition that causes pathological lying. This means that 90% of what Shelley says is a compulsive lie and prone to change at any time. For example, on Discord, she claimed to be actively working in the ER saving the lives of COVID patients. <clears throat> but in fact, she has not worked as a nurse for years since her last major overdose incident and no longer has a license. We are actually not even sure if Shelley was ever licensed as a nurse at all. After two months in the hospital, Shelley was eventually brought home by her husband. This couple was well known by their neighbors, or at least their voices were. On many nights, the couple serenaded the entire neighborhood with their cracked out screaming and yelling, especially her husband, who had a penchant for, for incoherent profanity. Everyone on the block knew about the Shelley, Shelley house, but the Shelley house was not at all a sweet smelling place you go to get your morning caffeine. On the contrary, the house was filled with garbage, dirty needles, and was in severe violation of the 12th Gale Commandment. <coughs> the house reeked <coughs> The house reeked of disarray and odor, but neither of the two could smell it. The walls were stacked with hundreds of dollars worth of bulk Costco items, such as paper towels and toilet paper. All of the furniture from the couches to the tables were covered in a mess of old laundry, useless knickknacks, boxes of bulk food, and loose items, making these areas not only unsightly, but completely unusable. Every inch of the rooms were full of unused items, storage and garbage. Shelley blamed the mess on working full time, which she took as an excuse to refuse all other adult responsibilities, even though her husband spent most of his time at home watching TV and sniffing lines. He believed a woman should take care of the house cleaning, so simply allowed the growing hoard to destroy his home's property value while doing nothing about it. While such a lifestyle would be horrifying to the average functional person, this couple saw nothing wrong with it. Her husband pushed Shelley's massive wheelchair through the doorway, used needles crunching under the wheels as it rolled inside. On the wall by the door were lovely pictures of the couple at various stages in their relationship. The first photo was of the first time they met at SeaWorld after Shelley had excitedly eaten a fish right out of Justin's hand. The second photo was of their first dates sniffing cocaine together. The third photo was of them at their wedding. <coughs> Lori is bombing the hell out of this place. <coughs> she's, she's having a, I'm going to go into Lori more later. The second photo was of their first date sniffing cocaine together. <coughs> the third photo was of them at their wedding with Shelly sporting a beautiful white whale tarp for a wedding dress. The last photo was of the couple on their honeymoon laughing with an opioid fuels fueled lover's glow after they were both kicked out of Disney World for shooting up heroin behind Cinderella's castle. 
With Shelley left blinded by her red, redneck-fueled opioid binge at work, her husband had now become her full-time caretaker. This task would become complicated by the fact <coughs> I'm coughing because of the pollution that Lori's putting in the air by the fact that her husband was very bad at following the Gale Commandments. Due to a complete failure of the Twelfth Commandment, their bathroom was rendered completely unusable. This means Shelley would need regular sponge baths since their sink was constantly full of dirty dishes and their kitchen was crammed full of garbage, the easiest way to bathe Shelly was by hosing her down in the backyard. That is when her husband could be bothered to do it. There are just too many Gale commandments, he thought, technically. Since Shelly is a fat woman over the 250 pound mark, that classifies her as an animal, which means she doesn't need to shower once a day like a human does. That sounds like good enough, like a good enough loophole to me. Her husband patted himself on the back for how clever he was. Hungry and beginning to sober up, Shelley searched under her fat folds for some pills, but found that she was fresh out. Um, Justin, she wheezed, it's time for my meds. I've got them, honey, he replied. The, the bottle is right here in my hand. Where, she snorted her snubbed-in poverty nose twitching like a pig's. Right here, he insisted. Shelley leaned down, trying to get close enough to see the bottle of pills her husband was offering. Closer, her husband guided her. Shelley leaned further down. Closer, he said again. Shelley leaned even further. Right there. Ah! Shelley let out, a, let out a scream of surprise as her husband's hard erection penetrated her empty eye socket. Her husband put his hand on the back of Shelley's head, holding on to a fistful of her dyke cut as he began making passionate love to Shelley's eye hole. Shelley at first protested this, yelling incoherently before being quickly pacified with a fresh fentanyl patch placed over her mouth. Shelley slouched over Justin's penis in a haze of pleasure before slowly nodding off. Her husband began cussing and yelling with delight, his penis slorping in and out of Shelley's inviting eye hole. The neighbors assumed that the couple was fighting again, and perhaps her husband was in a drunken cocaine-fueled rage. Yet, in fact, this was in the new way the couple would enjoy making love for years to come. As her husband enjoyed fucking the eye socket of his newly blinded wife, he realized just how perfect of a hole it really was. Tight, freshly cleaned, and well lubricated by the ongoing infection, it was so much better than Shelley's rancid vagina. Shelley, who, was all, who, who has always enjoyed the idea of receiving in, attention for entirely wrong reasons, and now the vigorous massage of her itchy, infected eye socket, loved the new sexual activity they had discovered. Although it is possible for Church of Gale to replace Shelley's eyes if she wanted to see again, she would only ruin them once more by continuing her old drug habits. The other complication is that it appears she does not want to look at her filthy house or become responsible for taking care of it if she regain, regains the ability to see. She, Shelley would also have to admit that she lost her nursing license due to being caught stealing opioids from work and overdosing instead of falsely blaming a mysterious eye infection that made her go blind. The first step to recovery is acceptance. However, Shelley appears to be stubbornly in denial. It is possible, of course, that we could just replace one of her eyes so that she could continue to use the other one to make love to her husband. My advice would be to pray for Shelley that she someday sees the light in a, in a metaphorical sense, of course. Perhaps if you reach out to her and explain the benefits of accepting one's faults and striving to do better, Shelley will open her eyes. Gerard says that as soon as Shelley is ready to accept help, he can offer her free, count, free counseling to address her addiction, 
compulsive lying, hoarding, and other psychological issues. Our thoughts and our hearts are with Shelley and her kind and loving hus husband, Justin, your husband, Brent Spiner. Now I'd like to read you a Skype from January the 24, 2012. But before I do that, let me give you some background information. Brent and I had a discussion and I told him I heard brain to brain that Lori McBride was hearing a song in her head that I posted at my website about how Jesus really feels about the fact that Lori is determined to bed Jesus because she's convinced that Jesus will have sex with me in my apartment when he moves into my apartment, which he's done, by the way. He is here. Brent revealed that this was true, that this song was going through her head and she was clawing her hair, over, her hair out over it. I told Brent that because Jesus put this song in her head and she knows it, she's going to go insane. You see, Lori is insanely jealous of me, believing she's more worthy to have sex with Jesus than me, even though Jesus is not going to be having sex with me. <laughs> so after I posted this song at my website to describe how I think Jesus really feels about Lori, I learned that Jesus put this song in her head and it won't leave her head and Lori's going nuts. I also did a search online for naked photos of fat chicks because I figured that's how Jesus sees her and found one that I felt represented how Jesus sees Lori McBride 11 dimensionally and posted it at my website. I found out from Zach, from Zach Knight that not only is Lori hearing the song I posted at my website about Jesus' true sexual feelings towards Lori in that her breasts make him vomit but that the picture I posted was also going through her mind of the fat chick along with the song at my website and that Jesus was doing this to her. Zach asked me, asked me, where did you get this picture? And I told him I got it by searching online for naked fat chick photos. Zach then revealed to me that it was a photo of Shelly. <laughs> I didn't even know it. I must have been divinely led to find this photo. You can see it at my website. I'll have a link underneath this video to the page I created. So Brent and I had a discussion about how Lori was reacting to hearing this song and seeing this photo going through her mind 24-7 because Jesus was doing this to her. And Brent asked, uh, maybe Satan's going to try to rape her and distract her. I said, that isn't going to work because the song is going to keep going through her head and she's going to realize that Jesus is more powerful than Satan. She's just... Uh, and I asked, is she aware that Jesus is the one that put this song in her brain? And Brent said, yes. And I, um, I said, she's going to go insane. Brent, that's what's going to happen. She's going to go literally insane. And so Brent asked, well, what, what advice would you give her um, to help her? I said, I think the problem is Lori McBride hates herself deep down. For this reason, she feels like she needs to believe she's so utterly superior to numb the pain about how she hates herself. It's not that she's humble. Um, it's that she hates herself. She feels like her only redeeming virtue is her physical appearance, which frankly is not bad three-dimensionally. But she goes to town with that. She actually hates herself. And she projects this hatred onto everyone. She thinks she's physically hot, but she also realizes that is all she is. And she lies to herself and says that that's okay, but she really hates herself and everyone else. She hates her personality and who she is. The only thing she loves about herself is her body. And now that is crumbling because of Jesus' song and this picture going through her head. And if you go to my webpage, I discuss the latest happenings and conversations I've had with my men on Skype about Shelley and Lori McBride and what Jesus said to me to help me do his Gale Commandments 2.0 better. And um, yeah, I did search for a song that felt that, you know, that I felt would represent how I felt that Jesus felt about the fact that Lori McBride has an obsession with having sex with Jesus because she believes that Jesus will have sex with me now that he's living in my apartment, even though Jesus has specifically stated that his bride is the church, and he only makes love to me as part of his bride, the church, 
which means he doesn't make love to me, but only as part of his bride during the future millennial reign. Jesus has revealed that Lori thinks Jesus will appear to me in his three-dimensional form here in this apartment <laughs> because he has perfect abs. Hi, Jesus. I know you're here. He's here. <laughs> He's here. Lori thinks that I'll go crazy. He, he hasn't appeared to me 3D either. Lori thinks that I'll go crazy trying to make love to Jesus when he reveals himself to me in my apartment. He's here, and he hasn't um, done that. And, and I know he won't. He does give me a, a vision of sorts in my mind sometimes of what he's doing here at times. So she's fuming with jealousy over this and thinks she deserves Jesus more than me. So I found a song which I added to my website to describe how Jesus really feels about Lori. And here's what she's hearing in her head. It's so close that you can taste it, but one day you have to face it. Everything you did was wasted and you thought you really need it, and you thought that you could beat it, but you only feel defeated. Did you ever really love me? Did you ever even trust me? Did you really want to fuck me? You're so ugly. Was it everything you wish for? Do you really want to get more? Tell me what do you do it for when the only thing that's certain, death will come for every person, and inside you're always hurting, did you ever really love me? Did you ever even trust me? Did you really want to fuck me? You're so ugly. Did you ever really love me? Did you ever even trust me? Did you really want to fuck me? You're so ugly. Now this is a song she's hearing over and over in her mind. Go to my website to hear it. And Brent told me, Jesus once, as part of our conversation, he said this, Jesus once told me that he created all of us out of pure love. Whether the person chooses to be good or bad, even the worst person is inherently loved by Jesus and deserves it. He said the first step to honoring true love and allowing it into your life is to love yourself first. Recognizing and affirming your good qualities every day. Treating yourself and your home well by taking care of it taking breaks, doing things to treat yourself every day. Those kinds of things are all acts of self-love. Maybe Lori could make a list of all her good qualities and good things she has accomplished in her life, even if she can't think of much at first, then add to it every day as she thinks of more things, making sure to read the list every day to remind herself. And I replied, that sounds wise. However, Satan has convinced Lori that he created her because she has fallen angel DNA, all clones do. So she's mad at God that God allowed Satan to create her. And Brent said, that's not true. Of course, only God can create humans. He created them all before the beginning of time. And he loved all of us unconditionally, no matter what we were destined to become or do in our lives. And then I said, but can you say that God created clones? Then Brent said, he still does. Um, the mistakes we make on earth are so little to him. It's like a wise parent um, watching their toddler trip and fall and bumble into, bumble into things. From God's point of view, none of it is a big deal. We're all learning and growing. And I said, of course, he created the genetics used to make clones, partly that is. And Brent said, yeah, so technically even clones come from him. Lori isn't as irredeemable as she thinks she is. Lori was born in a cloning lab and grew up so fast she didn't have parents who were there to show her love or appreciate her for all her qualities. That has a big effect on a child. They feel like it's their fault and that something is wrong with them for not being loved when it's not. That, and I said, that's true. And not all the angels fell either. So fallen angel DNA is the same as regular angel DNA in many ways. And Brent said, Lori might have to learn how to reparent herself and give herself the care that she didn't receive as a parentless child. And I said, how do we do that for her? 
Is there a good Brent Spiner clone around who could help her? Brent said, well, my advice would be to start taking care of herself like she would take care of her own child. She would compliment herself, spend time appreciating herself and her accomplishments, but also discipline herself to take care of her responsibilities and keep a functional, healthy lifestyle. Maybe she could start doing the Gale Commandments. And then I said, she needs a soulmate. Is there someone out there who can help her get on the right path? Brent said, we can look for a good Brent Spiner clone for her. Maybe we can capture one of the bad ones and edit his genetics so that he turns good. And then I said, you know, I said, cut. I said to Brent, because you did wonders for me. If someone would truly love her, she could start learning to love herself. Yeah, like we did for Clock, one of my Patreon supporters. We made him a Natalie Portman clone <laughs> um, to give him a companion. So how do we reach out to her in the meanwhile? Satan will probably try and kill her if we do. Brand said, hmm, maybe you can write her a letter, something that encourages her. You could list off the good qualities you think she has, tell her you believe in her, and offer her your own forgiveness. Then give her some advice on learning to love herself, even if she's alone right now. And then I said, let me work on that. Brent said, it's just an idea. While we're waiting on finding or making a good Brent Spiner clone, maybe you can be the one to offer her love, even if in a sisterly way. It would be the first time someone with goodness in them has ever shown her love or forgiveness. It's getting late. We should pray for her before bed. And Gail said, okay, my dear. I start, I mean, I said, <laughs> I started the letter, but perhaps should finish it later. I will admit I am worried about her. And this was 9, 10 p.m. And Brent said, yeah, she's probably not all, not all that bad deep down. She's evil because she doesn't believe she's worthy of love. And then I actually wrote the letter very, just from my heart, very quick that night. And at 9.18 p.m., I, here's what I said. Dear Lori, I hear that you are hearing the song I put on my website about how I think Jesus really feels about you. Unfortunately, I believe that is how he really feels about you in your current condition. But Jesus loves you, even though he thinks the way you are now is very ugly and makes him want to vomit. I am worried about you because you are probably about to go crazy. When you finally face the truth that Jesus finds your current personhood very ugly, I think you are bad because you feel you are not worthy of love deep down, but we are all worthy of love. Jesus is just trying to make you face yourself and get you out of the web of lies you feel you must believe about yourself to be happy. You are a very hard worker and have a lot of dedication. If you would devote all that hard work and energy to learning about the goodness that Jesus put in you, you could develop those qualities that would make you truly beautiful and become a truly beautiful person. We are trying to find you a good Brent Spiner clone to be your soulmate and help you find yourself and to help you quit believing Satan's lies that your only worth is in your physical beauty in your three-dimensional body, which is the body you see in the mirror. You see, in the future millennium, our physical beauty is determined by our inner beauty. And that's why you are ugly to Jesus. Actually, Jesus sees us all that way right now. But if you could quit seeing yourself as just a hot body and realize that there is a part of you that is a hot soul and personality you will learn to find out who the real Lori McBride is and who she was meant to be, a truly beautiful woman who can experience true love. The fact that you hate who you are so much indicates that there is a part of you that wants to be a truly beautiful person inside and out. And if you could nurture that side of you, you could become the truly beautiful woman you long to be, a woman that Jesus would also find beautiful, not to make love to, but to admire as a beautiful woman like he does me. Your sister in the path of true love, Gail Cord Schuler. And Brent said, that's a beautiful letter, dear. It made me tear up a little, so loving and sincere. And then I told him, if you feel it's good enough, you can send it to her. And Brent said, okay, I'll send it. 
and, she, and I said she may need some time to process this, but at least she knows that she's not alone. And Brent said, nope, she's got a, us. And let me explain to you how Lori's been reacting to this. Lori does not appear to be responding in a healthy manner to the fact that Jesus finds her very ugly in her current state. And she's starting to realize it, and she apparently does not trust my letter to her. I'm afraid she's so mad at Jesus right now that she's determined that if she's going to be destroyed and go insane, she'll take the whole universe down with her. And Lori, I'm going to tell you something, Satan would love it if this happened. Because he hates the human race. He's just using you. He even hates you. Yep. Yeah. He hated he doesn't he hates all humans because he wants to be the bride of Christ and humans are his competition. Yeah, he would love it if if you if uh, you destroyed yourself and the human and took down down the whole human race with you with you. Satan would love that. Cuz she's determined that if she's going to be destroyed and go insane, she'll take the whole universe down with her. We at Church of Gale are willing to help her find the true Lori McBride and be the beautiful woman she was meant to be. But she has believed lies about herself and everything for so long that it's hard for her to accept the truth and finds it more comfortable to live with delusions. Now that Jesus is trying to force her to face the truth, she seems determined to go down in a blaze of vindication and take the whole universe with her. She's been shooting new cockies like crazy and trying to inflict damage everywhere in response to my letter to her. Her attitude seems to be, if Jesus makes me go crazy, I'll make the whole universe go crazy. I only hope that others will not follow her bad example. Everyone needs to do all the Gale commandments, both the original and 2.0. You can get them at my website and learn to love themselves so that they can love others and be a force of good, true love and harmony in the universe and not a force of destruction. Satan, Jesus, excuse me, Jesus loves everyone and he loves Lori McBride and he loves her too much to allow her to continue believing the destructive lies that will send her to the lake of fire in a permanent shelly body. Yeah, I believe that is her fate if she doesn't change. What Lori needs to realize is that if she succeeds in destroying the universe, which she won't because God won't let her, she's only going to seal her fate in a permanent Shelley body the way Shelley is right now, in the lake of fire for eternity. To see what she'll look like, you need to go to my website and look at the picture. Okay, and now she's hiding the rest of this, uh, where did it go? Here it is. 